Hi there, this is Josh Fisher. I'm the Senior Product Manager of the Commerce Edition Acumatica. In this video, I want to go into detail about the actual integration between Acumatica and Big Commerce using the new Commerce Edition connector. Now what we've done is we've built technology that allows us to integrate Acumatica with third-party systems in a much faster and easier way. And one of the biggest benefits of this new system is that anyone with a little bit of technical knowledge, they don't have to be a developer, they don't have to be an engineer, but they're able to um, make configuration changes to the integration between the two systems without knowing any code. It's all uh, just configurations, it's just buttons and levers, and that's what I want to show you. So let's talk through this integration. So notice that when I have this enabled, there's now a menu item over here on the left. Uh, it says Commerce. When I log in or when I go to this Commerce tab, it's all these different windows that I can open up. We go to the Stores window, and this is where I'm actually establishing the connection between this ERP and an instance of Big Commerce. So I choose the connector here, Big Commerce, and then I enter a store name. Now, to me, this store name just represents this particular store. And you can add, if, if I wanted, I could um, uh, remove this item and I could add a second store, a third store. We've talked with prospects that are interested in connecting to 30 stores. Um, certainly possible. Okay, so in this case, I'm just referring to this store. Um, down here in the connection settings, this is just API and web dev information that's coming from the Big Commerce system. So if we were in Big Commerce, we go to the advanced settings, API accounts. This is where you would get those API keys and you would drop them in here. As soon as you drop that information in, you can test your connection and then that's going to let you know that now the two systems are connected. But there's a lot of other settings here that I need to establish um, before data will start flowing back and forth properly. We can go first to the entity settings. Now here is a list of all the different data points that are pushing and pulling data between the two systems. And in this window, you're just enabling the ones that are important to you, typically all of them. Um, of course, if there were some that you didn't want, like non-stock items, you could turn it off. But um, in this case, I have all of them turned on, okay? Also, notice that I have these uh, this column down here for sync immediately. That's in association with the real-time sync. So you can set up the push notifications to in real time uh, fetch data. So let's say that the, the sales orders are, um, the real time sync is turned on with the sales orders, but I don't have sync immediately enabled. What that means is when a purchase happens on the e-commerce site, the ERP will fetch the information and pull it into the ERP, but it won't sync into a sales order until I synchronize it, until I say, okay, push it into the system as a sales order. Okay, so the next window is the customer settings. Here is where you're establishing, if you have multiple uh, branches, you can uh, tell the system which branch the orders from the website should be associated with. You can set your customer class. Um, this will represent if a customer creates an account on the e-commerce site and it flows into the ERP, what you're doing is you're saying this is the class that should be assigned to that customer. You can also set up unique customer uh, numbering and location numbering. In this case, location is in a reference to the address, the customer's addresses. Um, and if you, um, if you wanted to allow your customers to buy on the site, as a guest user, you can certainly do that. And in that case, you would be associating all of your guest users with one customer account inside of the ERP. And this is where you define which uh, guest account that would be, which, which customer record that would be. Okay, we go into inventory settings. This is where you can control um, how your product information and availability flow back and forth between the two systems. So Big Commerce requires all products to be associated with product categories inside of Big Commerce, but there's a lot of ERP users that don't um, use the sales categories inside the ERP. That's what we have connected. Um, the sales category inside of the ERP is connected to the product categories inside of um, Big Commerce. So you could set up just a, a default uh, sales category 
um, maybe one for stock items and one for non-stock items. And you're just telling the system when you export items to the e-commerce system, and if they don't have a sales category, just assign this one to them um, on the way over to the website. Now, this isn't going to update anything inside the ERP. It's just going to take that product and push it into a product category called, in this case, BC stock items. Okay. Um, default availability. Default availability. In this case, we can tell the system that you want to track quantities by default. You want to track product quantities. You won't, you don't want to track the quantities. You want to set every product to a pre-order product, or you want to set every product to disabled. Um, so so you have this is just a default setting, and then you can go into the individual product and um, uh, change the setting. So if this is a default for track quantity you could go into one of your products and set it to don't track quantity or pre-order item, okay? This is just the default for the majority of your products. And then you can also tell the system, what do we do with the availability information? Um, what do you do when you run out of, of inventory? You can tell the system, don't do anything. You can mark the item as disabled, or you can convert the item to a pre-order item. So you have that kind of control over the system. And when it comes to the availability, you can set the availability on um, the, the type of inventory. Either it's the items is officially available, it's available for shipping, or it's on hand. Okay. Now, what's interesting is this system offers a multi-warehouse integration. So you could choose to pull inventory from all of your warehouses, or you could select specific warehouses. And what's neat is you can drill even deeper. So in this case, um, I'm choosing retail, and notice that I didn't set the location. Well, by not setting the location, it's telling the system every location at retail um, should be considered for inventory. But let's just choose another warehouse here. And then let's imagine there were multiple locations, or if we went into this one, I think there are multiple locations. You could drill even deeper to a specific location in the warehouse that you want inventory to be associated with the website. Now that's really helpful. There, are, We've definitely worked with customers that have, let's say, three different warehouses, but only one of those warehouses should be connected to the e-commerce site for whatever reason. Yeah, it, it could be lots of different things. But um, you have the ability to, to, to connect the systems on that granular of a level. Okay, And then we go into order settings. Now the order settings allow you to um, choose which order type your uh, e-commerce orders should be associated with. In this case, I created a, a new unique one called e-commerce website order and associated with that. Um, it's a good idea to have something unique, but it's up to you. You can associate your return order types. Um, when discounts come into the system, how should they be recorded? Should they be recorded on the line or should they re be recorded on the entire document? Um, and the last thing is we, we actually allow gift certificates to be used as a payment method on the e-commerce system. So there's a process you have to go through to configure your ERP for gift certificates. You have to set up a non-stock item that represents gift certificates. But then you also need to associate uh, a payment method with gift certificates inside the system here. And what we're doing uh, in this case, I am telling the system uh, which particular non-stock item uh, is uh, representing the gift certificate. And then over here, this is where we're setting up the payment method for uh, gift certificates. Notice too, we can set up multiple payment methods. So there's lots of different ways that you can take payment on the e-commerce system. Credit card, net 30 terms, uh, gift certificate, uh, store credit even. So each of the store payment types that are available in Big Commerce, they can be mapped to specific payment methods inside of the ERP. Okay, And you can go even further, you could set up multiple currency uh, cash counts, things like that. Right. So everything I just showed you, th this is just the default settings for establishing your connection between Acumatica and Big Commerce. But we can go even further. So if we go into the entities area, yep, we can leave. Um, the entities area is where we can go to each of the data points, like customer, stock items, sales orders, and you can establish how this data flows back and forth between the two systems, right? So if we look at customer, for instance, you can establish should customer information be bi bi-directional 
or should it just be importing from the e-commerce website or should it just be exporting from the ERP back to the website? You can, um, you, you have those different options. Really, you have those different controls here. And you can also, as I mentioned before, that sync immediately. You can set those things here. If, um, in this case, customers are syncing in real time right now, so I can set it to sync immediately. Now, the other thing I want to show you is if we drill into a stock item, for instance, uh, this is it's very common that customers have attributes or even custom fields on their products. And it may be important that those custom fields or attributes be exposed to the e-commerce site so that their customers can see that information. Now, in the past and with most systems, um, as soon as you start talking about something like this, you're immediately thinking about which developer is going to help you work on this, right? Because custom mapping some some random field that's not even part of the core system, that it's such a customization that you, you can't even imagine using a, a configuration tool. However, that's exactly what we've built. We've built this custom mapping tool that allows you to set up your custom field or your attribute in the ERP and your custom field inside BigCommerce. And here you can map those fields together. You can do this for stock items. You can do it for customers, um, all the different data points that are available to you here that also have um, custom fields inside the ERP. Okay, so I've talked a little bit about the real-time sync. Um, you have the ability to, um, on a data point level, you can either set up uh, a real-time synchronization between the systems. Um, like I said, a real-time sync that only fetches information. You can have a scheduled synchronization or you can have manual synchronization. And this window is where you would um, set each of those up. So for instance, the sales orders, if we wanted to turn on the real-time sync, just be a matter of selecting it and hit start, that's going to turn it on. And now the that synchronization is running. And I'd have to go back to that other window and set the sync immediately feature. Okay. Again, lots of control. You don't have to call a developer. When we go into the the fetch data uh, window, this is where we can um, do just that. We can force the system to fetch data. And um, for instance, the sales orders. Let's say that maybe we we know a change happened in the e-commerce site but for some reason it's not coming through we can go to this website and we can say uh, fetch incremental data like anything that's changed um, since the last timestamp you can go ahead and fetch or full which means a hundred percent of the data that's out there go ahead and grab it or vice versa a hundred percent of the data go ahead and push it out to the e-commerce system you can set um, you, you can use this fetch data tool to do that. This is a window that you use during the initial implementation where you go through and push all the customers from the ERP into the e-commerce site, all the stock item, uh, stock items and all the um, uh, other information that's going from the ERP over. This is where all of that's done. And then additionally, you can see here, here are data points which are attempting to uh, synchronize between the two systems um, and I can use this window to push those items through for instance here's a it looks like there's a few customers that are pending I can uh, let's just go ahead and select those and we're gonna process them and that's gonna go ahead and push that information through so it's uh, synchronized okay and that lets me know it looks like there's something it, it's part of testing um, but then there's also information here where, uh, for some reason, data failed to synchronize. And I can actually look at the error information. Notice that the error information is human readable. Like this actually makes sense to me. Postal code is required field in big commerce. Well, it's telling me that um, uh, somewhere there's a postal code that's missing. And if I go to this, uh, the, the ID, I can actually click this link and it's going to open up that... Um, uh, record for me and I can see oh this is a Chinese um, address there's no postal code it makes sense and either I can go in and fix that information or um, uh, or or if I wanted to I could just skip it I could I could actually just hit skip and, it, and then the system's not going to worry about that one any longer but the big thing is these errors are actually readable um, uh, whenever these pop up whoever is managing the system should be able to read these errors and be clued in on what needs to be resolved 
Okay, and the last window is the sync status. So the sync status is showing 100% of data that is flowing back and forth between the two systems. Okay, and it's giving you a lot of information about those data points. If you notice that I'm only showing like 20 different rows here, and if we um, scroll through all the different pages, you know, it's going to show every single data point that has been synchronized uh, between the two systems. And whenever we go to this page, it's a great page to see, you know, if um, something, if you want to make sure that data is flowing in, maybe you're not sure if it's set up to be on real time or not, you can come to this page and quickly find out. Maybe there's um, a, a, an issue and you need to read the error messages, you're, you're not expecting there to be an error, you can find out here. And you can use this window to drill down to specific um, topics, like, you know, I just want to see uh, sales orders that are failed and pending. Right. In this case, I'm going to look at 100% of the sales orders that have come through. Um, oh, and this is a new dev system for me, so there's I haven't started testing yet. So customers, here's all the customers that have come through. Right, we're looking at all of them. So um, the rest of the windows, uh, substitute lists, the preferences. Those two windows are more for your um, initial configurations, substitutes, um, really. Imagine you have Big Commerce and you have Acumatica, and using this um, country's example, um, one system, the the Acumatica system uses acronyms for the countries, whereas Big Commerce uses full names. Um, this substitute tool is just mapping um, those uh, pieces of data together. So it's it's saying that you know when you're talking about United States, the Big Commerce use. Uh, the full term United States rather than US okay and you and there's information out of the box we have countries and a lot of these different uh, pieces of data that is um, set however if you wanted to extend this or you needed to extend it for any reason again no developer you can do all this by yourself okay uh, connector preferences is just that it's a handful of preferences okay and then uh, the last thing is the dashboard so um, everything that I showed you is is all wrapped up in this dashboard. Now, obviously, we just threw this together. Like I said, I haven't even done any test purchases on this system yet, so I don't have any data that's flowing through. But this can be it can be manipulated however you like. If you wanted to go into more detail, or or there were specific data points that were important to you, you can use this dashboard, manipulate it, and turn it into a tool. So the e-commerce manager, when they when they get their cup of coffee and sit down in the morning, they can pull this up and immediately get a, a glimpse of what's going on um, inside the business. Okay, so I know I was talking really fast. There's probably some details that I missed. Happy to go into more detail with you. We do have uh, some PDFs that um, that go into more detail about the specific fields of data and how things are connected back and forth. Um, but happy to jump on the phone, answer any questions you have. If you wanted to go through a demo, um, happy to do that as well. Uh, thanks for your time. I appreciate it.